Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Roots, a new update, bringing things all the way forward on 112.2 to a brand new iterization of the old style, but now it's been refreshed, remade. As you can see, it's made by several people now and handed over from Ellicent from days of old. So let's get into the basics on how you can start in this new version of Roots. Something that I feel I should mention at the beginning of any of these videos like this is that what can you benefit from this mod? Well, you can get magical armors that have different effects and abilities. You can get magical tools and staffs with lots of magical spells. You get magical soils that have all sorts of different effects on your crops. You can have all sorts of interesting creatures that are going to uh, jo show up in the world <laughs> as, as well as uh, some new a new villager at least as you can see here uh, with some interesting yeah. trades and whatnot uh, you have new planting options a way of playing peaceful without actually having to kill any kind of uh, well passives or anything like that and all sorts of area effect abilities and it, it's just really cool in general it's a very druid like mod uh, in, in inspiration I mean heck the uh, the NPC that's added is a druid. <laughs> and if you want shortcuts on getting things in the mod, this is one way of doing it. But let's get into the uh, beginnings of this and how to progress. So if we look here, this is everything that Roots adds, but it is dependent upon Mystical World, which is a uh, kind of a library file that also adds in a whole bunch of other cool stuff, including some other ores and whatnot. So there may be a little bit of overlap between the two. In fact, you saw most of those animals over there are from Mystical World and not actually from Roots itself. But that is uh, neither here nor there. So to start off with, you're going to want to punch grass out in the world. Uh, as you see here, until you eventually find yourself a little bit of, well, I'll just say that I end up finding some eventually instead of your regular vanilla seeds. Uh, but you will eventually find one of these, a wild root. Uh, as you can see, I've got several of them here on the side. Once upon a time, you used to be able to eat these. You can't eat them anymore, at least not in their present state. <laughs> you might be able to use them in other uh, recipes and ingredients or whatnot, but they are not an edible food. They are an ingredient and key to making things. If you continue breaking grass, you'll find a few more things like aubergine seeds, which will allow you to grow aubergines, which for those that don't know what the aubergines are, those are eggplants. <laughs> and they give you a decent amount of uh, hunger. You can cook them and get a lot more. They're actually really good. They're, they're pretty darn pretty darn good there. And then there's, of course, stuffed aubergines, which require a few other ingredients and then give you a really good amount of uh, hunger replenished there, as well as saturation as well. Uh, but moving on from that, you'll also probably find some pterospores. Pterospores can get you several different aspects uh, going on, but before I proceed with that, I feel I should mention just about any of the seeds that you can find in uh, Roots, as well as, you know, mixed in with vanilla Minecraft, it's going to be able to make mixed seeds, which if you look here and I scroll through the recipes, you can see just four of any kind will make mixed seeds. And these can be used uh, if you cook them up to toast them and get you some really basic food early on. So you are basically able to forage in the grass for food if you're desperate enough. Uh, at the very least, this way you can also play passive. You don't have to go around killing uh, cows and sheep and, and horses and things of that nature. You know, you can just leave the, the wildlife to their own devices. So moving on from that you're going to probably want to take some of those pterospores and use them. Now, if I have a few pterospores, let's actually grab one here, and I place it on cobblestone that is adjacent to water, not above or below, but next to it, then it will turn that into moss stone, which is pretty darn cool in itself, but, I mean, it doesn't sound fantastical, but it is something that you will need to be aware of in order to progress, because you're going to need that moss. You're going to need to be able to scrape it off of there, and that is going to be with a knife. In this case, I'm just going to grab a wooden knife, but you can just right-click, makes a scissor noise, uses up a little bit of durability on there, and it makes terra moss. Now, knives are similar to swords, except more on a diagonal for the crafting. And to give you a little bit of an idea of how good or bad they might be, I've got them listed along here. Now, this top row here is going to be roots. This row here is what mystical world adds in, which is going to be copper, silver, and amethyst. Now, if you compare these, like a wooden knife is very basic. It's like two hearts or two, two damage, 
Golden Knife, two damage, you know, but they attack really fast in general. Uh, I mean, if you look 2.5 as opposed to like your regular Iron Sword is 1.6. So you can attack twice as fast for a little bit less damage. But if you proceed on with this, like a, a Silver Knife is actually pretty darn good. It's better or it's almost as good as an Iron Sword and so on. But also added in by Mystical World is going to be Copper and Silver Swords, which you can see an Iron Knife and a Copper Knife are actually a little bit different there for the damage. But uh, Iron and Copper... Eh, they're about the same for swords. Moving on, you can also make living swords and whatnot, but that that's specifically added by roots. This is basically vanilla as uh, styled <laughs> roots items. They're just going to have different varying durabilities as well as uh, you know a little bit faster attacks or slower attacks. But I, I'm I'm getting a bit you know crazy here. Let, let's continue on with progression on how to get the basics down in this with your terra moss. Once you've got some. You're probably going to want to get a bunch of it because it has a lot of uses. Namely, you can make a pyre. Now, this is a pyre. Uh, as you can see here, there are lots of things floating above it. That's not how it looks when you first place it down. It looks pretty much like this. Uh, just a little fire, a uh, fire pit of sorts. You take a wild mm -hmm. root, some terra moss, some wooden stone, and you make one of these things. Now, if, if you want, actually, do I have any pyres right now? No. There we go. Now I have a pyre. Let's toss this down on the ground. It is similar to Batania in the fact that you can throw things on top and they will start floating around it, sort of like the, uh, you know, the, the different recipes you have with that. Otherwise, you can just right click the items on there and they will go into this uh, pyre, which can be used to either just place items. If you want to take items back off, just right click with an empty hand and you'll start taking them off one at a time. So if I toss a couple items on there or three, you just need to have enough spaces in your inventory to grab them back off. There you go. And uh, that's one way of using those. Otherwise, uh, it, it is more used for cooking things. Like if I were to take a bunch of mixed seeds, one, two, three, four, five, and then I were to take a flint and steel and light it, it will then burn. And it will also give me a little bit of XP and some of those toasted seeds that I can then gnaw them up and eat as I want to. Uh, alternately, you can actually automate this to an extent to get it to light. Now in here I have a flint and steel and you can uh, just press a button here. It will light this and any fire that is in the space, uh, like the, the single space around it, will automatically light the pyre. So you can actually set traps if you so desired. You could have this hooked up to like trip wires and stuff. And then the pyre itself could have different effects. Now I just showed you a basic mundane way of using it. There's much more advanced ways of doing it. And that's going to be a ritual. Now a ritual will take several different items, including bark. Oh, wait, bark? How do I get bark? Well, you just need to find yourself a tree. In this case, let me run over here. And I've got my knife. Any knife will do, and you just chop it, and you get a chance of getting some bark. Now, depending upon the type of tree, of course, you'll get the bark, uh, that appropriate type. It does not reform to make the, uh, the tree itself. It is actually a harvesting tool. It is a weapon, and it can be used as, you know, a way of just picking up moss off of moss stone and getting that terra moss, which you're going to be needing to craft with. So once you have that, you can then proceed with your ritual of overgrowth. Now, what is this going to allow me to do? Well, we'll see here. Before I get too carried away, because you're, you're probably going to wonder, how can I get all this stuff? Well, I did kind of jump ahead a little bit. If you find a, a library, or if you want, you can make a book and make the druidic arts. Now, it, you'd think, all right, well, if I was talking about peaceful mode, doesn't a book require leather? Well, if you look at the recipe for books, there's a new recipe that just requires string. You're basically just tying a bunch of papers together to make a book, which then you can use to make your uh, druidic, druidic arts book. As you see here, you just take a piece of wild root and nab it together. And of course, it uses patchouli, which is going to be another uh, item in here that you can use. And you'll have you can go through all the different areas in here. There's an index that you can search through just by starting to type, uh, and you can see things along there. Now, if I were to look up this growth ritual or overgrowth, as it is, it says here: natural energy spring forth from the pyre, bringing life to otherwise barren stone. This causes moss to grow on nearby cobblestone. This is another way of being able to grow it without having to actually constantly, you know, look for terra spores. So let me, let me put this here. I'll push this down. There we go. And you'll start seeing that the uh, naked cobblestone near the water's edge will start to form and create, there we go, a little bit of moss stone. 
allowing you uh, a certain measure of being able to harvest this stuff and get the moss for yourself and get a store of terra moss. So this is a, an easy way of doing it. So I recommend taking your first terra moss, using it to make uh, a, a pyre set up and using this ritual near the nearby. Now, if you need to stop this and make it end, because it will end after a while, it may take some time, just use a bucket of water. And that should work. Actually, here, let me grab that, refill it just in case I end up needing that in the future. But that should work. Plus, if you have the ingredients on here from the previous recipe, you just need to shift right click and those items will automatically go back into the, um, there we go, grab that back, uh, into the, uh, the recipe here. If you have them in your inventory, I don't. So therefore, it's not going to show up here on this case. Now, if in this case, there we go, I just went into creative mode, so it automatically populated the items there. Sneak right clicking will allow you to just take these items and do it. And then, of course, you can always just relight it. Press the button in this case because I've just got a, a dispenser with the flint and steel in there. And it will relight automatically and recast the ritual if I needed it to. But that is one way that that works out. Now, in order to progress further, we're going to need to look at a little something else. Now, in this little tiny hut that I have here, which, yes, you may find huts as well as some other uh, little bits of uh, world gen. Not not that. That's that's for another video. But some other points of interest in the world gen, like some secret danger areas and whatnot. Uh, this might even have some kind of uh, floor below. And I stylized this house myself, of course, but it was uh, looking a little different when I started. But if I go in here, I have this, a mortar and a pestle, of course. And in order to make these, it's just a bunch of stone. And this is just some cobble and some coal or charcoal. It's not not difficult whatsoever. Now, in order to use this, you're going to want to take the ingredients and click them in there. So if I take some wheat, plain old vanilla wheat, put that in there, right? Then I take my pestle and I right click. I then smash it up and I can place that in there and store it. And I get flour. What can I use this for? I can make bread from one piece of wheat. This is pretty darn cool. Flour can be uh, made from multiple sources. Now, in this case, it says like one wheat will get you one, two wheat will get you two, and so on. So there's nothing really changing in those recipes. But you can also get flour from potatoes. Now, what else can a mortar and pestle produce? Quite a lot of things. If you end up killing any of the little beetles in the mod, which I still recommend you try it out in a peaceful way, uh, you can use light blue dye. They may end up getting killed by other means as well. But moving on, you can also end up getting more bone meal for your bone uh, instead of the three that you would normally get. You can get uh, sugar from your sugar canes in a greater quantity. You can also turn your ingots into dusts, uh, which should be ore dictionary to work with other things. And on top of that, you might be able to turn flowers into a bunch of petals uh, appropriately for the number of flowers that you may have. You can also grind up some rune stones and uh, other things like that, making some different magical uh, ingredients and whatnot. So, next thing you're going to want to do is make some spell dust. That's right, spell dust with your mortar and pestle. And that is going to be specifically the Grove Supplication spell. Uh, and why do you want to do that? Because this is how you're going to be able to craft things, is by using a Fey Crafter and a Grove Stone and, and so on. But it has to be an enchanted Grove Stone, not one of these normal ones. And in order to do that, you're going to need the Grove Supplication spell. So we're going to start with the spell ingredients and then work kind of backwards on how all those different items are going to be created along the way. Then you can use all of these tools to pretty much further along anything that you need to do with roots. So, spell dust of grove supplication. You need some kind of door, moss stone, oak sapling, wild root, and petals tossed in your mortar and pestle. Then you smash it down with that pestle and you get that spell dust. So as you can see, I have all these items in my mortar and by hovering over it, it actually tells me I will be making a grove supplication uh, spell ingredient pile basically so you then use your pestle and voila I now have spell dust now how does a spell dust work it works with an imbuer just put it on there done no I'm kidding there, there's a little bit more to it than that the imbuer is just stone with some sticks if you are putting some kind of powder or something like that on there it will kind of just place it down on the base as you're seeing here if it's something else like a tool or whatnot, it will therefore kind of hover it above. So it is kind of like a little bit of a display rack at the same time. But in this case, you want it to be placed down here. 
Now on top of that, you're going to want to put a staff, which is just simply some kind of wood log, some sticks, and a wild root at the top. Once I have one of those, I can place it here, and it will then start imbuing that staff with the spell pile that you had here, thus allowing you a magical spell. Your first, in fact. There we go, Grove Supplication. When I hover over this, it says Grove Supplication, but it requires extra ingredients. Wild Root and Terra Moss it requires a certain quantity of those. And if I press Sneak, you can see that it has multiple slots for multiple spells. It has enough for up to five spells can be stored on one staff at a time. Now, if ever you do want to uh, remove those, I will say that you can just uh, imbue it with runic dust, which will be covered in a different video. But otherwise, that is one way to clear it off. Or you can just make yourself a new staff, as I have with all these ones here. <laughs> now, with this one, you're going to want to then start making a couple other items so that you can better effectively use your magical spell. One, you need ingredients, wild root and terra moss. I have some in my inventory, but boy, is it going to be a pain to have a whole bunch of this just piled around me. So you're going to want to make a component pouch, which you might even want to make this earlier on in the mod. But it is basically a backpack that has also an ingredients area for your spell casting components. It is just made with a chest, some wool, and some string. So it's pretty darn cool. Basically, you think of it as like a really nice looking fanny pack. But you open this up. <laughs> and you've got areas that you can store items in just in general there we go put some of these items in here that i'm not really using but i might need later a little bit of that and then you've got your ingredient slot here that you'll be using to cast spells with now since wild root is what i'm looking for and terra moss there we go i now have those stored in here and i can cast directly from them which is going to be pretty darn cool considering that it doesn't use up as much space as before now, I have an upgraded version of this, an apothecary pouch that you can use making an ender chest and other ingredients, as well as a spirit herb. But uh, just know that until you're able to make that, you can store multiple component pouches on here. And you can set it to a hotkey if you wanted to open it without having to have it on your, in, on your hotbar. So, next thing I'm going to want to make is going to be a Fey Crafter, which if you look, but the Terra Moss Wild Root makes one of these things. Pretty simple. And in fact, I have one sitting right here. Yep, you just place it down, that's it. It's just in a crafting table. A grove stone, which requires some terra moss and wild root. You're probably seeing a bit of a pattern at this point. This is why I said terra moss is important. You make this, you only need one. Now you can make multiples, but be aware that if you cast this spell that I'm about to cast, and you have others nearby, it will make all of them like this, the, the, the enchanted. Which you might think, well that's great! You know, because once you enchant them, they start growing grass and flowers and other things like that nearby. They start, like, making it really pretty. But it's a constant tick rate. So you're, you're not going to want to have tons of these all over your base, all activating, all trying to grow things all the time, or else you're going to have some uh, FPS issues with your uh, computer, perhaps. So instead, you probably just want one. And in this case, there we go. I just right-click with my Grove Supplication spell, and it is now enchanted and will start growing grass in the area. As I don't want grass out here, I'm going to break it. And then by breaking it, just so that you know, it loses its enchantment. So that is something you should be aware of. Now I do already have some of this set up over here, so I'm not going to bother with using the one that I just made over the, in that direction. You can then make all sorts of crazy things, because this here, your Fey Crafter, is a magical way of crafting things as well as your imbuer, as well as your pyre, as well as with just about everything in this mod can be used to craft in one way or another or in combination with others. Uh, something I did quickly forget to mention is that with the pyre, it has two things. There's one way of crafting things by taking items, putting them on there, lighting it, and you get those, like the toasted seeds, dugonias, infernal bulbs, stalic ripes, uh, baffle caps, cloudberries and moonglow leaves and pereskis which are all different herbs that you'll need eventually the other thing is to create a ritual which will affect an area or uh, some kind of special effect in, in a general space uh, so those are the two different uses for that just so that you know but moving on let's continue on with making runestone which you will need for some specific pyre rituals and that's this stuff here it's pretty darn cool looking it's very aesthetic and if you use it to combine uh, you can make runestone runestone bricks 
uh, rune, another style of runestone bricks, which is kind of like more of a, a rounded version, and chiseled runestone. And then uh, later on, you can also make yourself one of these things here, a sure-footed stone, which looks a little bit different than the original one here. Now, uh, among other things, of course, there's an incense burner and an offering plate, as you saw here, which can store certain items on them. <laughs> Let's just put that on there for now. Uh, now, if I were to continue with this, a rune stone can be made with four stone and a lapis. That's it. And that is what I have currently on here. In order to get this to actually activate, one, you have to have a groove, a groove stone, a grove stone nearby that has been supplicated. So it is showing these particles like this and it's being all pretty and cool. The other is that you have to be able to use a knife on it. Doesn't matter what kind of knife. I have a glowy diamond knife right now, but either way you just right click with a, di with a knife. There you go and you get a doorbell sound and then you get a bunch of rune stones on here. And then with those rune stones, like before, you can craft them into different types of bricks and whatnot. Use them for your different uh, pillars and your pyre rituals, and you should be good to go. Uh, moving on from that, though, because I'm not going to be covering pyres uh, too much more in this rest in this uh, episode. I'm just giving you guys the basics. We're going to move on to some of the ingredients that you can potentially make and the progression that it will allow you to unlock. First, dugonias. Obviously, you can just take a little bit of sugar, terra moss, and so on. Click on there and on a pyre and you get yourself some dugonias. Same as before, you just put them on here, light it, and you get the items. Uh, just like you would with the uh, toasted seeds. Now, from that you can make unending bowls. If you look, terra moss, the new dugonias, mortar, and a water bucket will make one of these things. And of course, yes, that is also made on the fey crafter, so it's not on the pyre. That is here. What does this allow you to do? Well, let me get a bucket. And if you watch here, I placed one down in an unending bowl. I click and I get water. It is an infinite water, sport, water source in one block space. Actually, in, a, in like a half slab space. If you look at the bounding box, you can see here. It's pretty darn cool. Uh, so I think, yeah, it's about the same height as, yeah. So it's about a half block space, which is pretty darn cool for a, a never-ending water source that you might uh, otherwise need, which could be very useful for putting out fires on your pyre if you want to end those rituals soon. Now on top of that you can make a sure-footed stone. Now I mentioned this earlier and it requires an unending bowl. There's good reason for that. This is one of the best things that you can use earlier on in your roots career and that is because you see this I'm, I'm walking on the fertile soil. Look I'm jumping up and down on it. Nothing's happening. That's the sure-footed stone doing its stuff right there. Oh, yeah. That's good. Now, if you look over here, there it is. It's also keeping all this hydrated in a large area as well. So it's pretty darn cool how that works. And, of course, just to give you an idea of some of the things you could do with this mod in general, let's use spell. I harvest. Then I magnet it all up. Then I start growing everything back up again. Oh my gosh, this, this mod is just really cool with how, <laughs> how effective you can really be uh, as well as just the fun that you can have with it. So enough with me growing a bunch of uh, plants in the garden. Let's get on to the next part. And that is you can make these pretty flowers around here. Pereskia is what they're called. You'll need a glistering melon, wild root, redstone, sugarcane, and beetroots. You get yourself three of those. And of course, you can then convert those. Uh, if you put these in here, you can turn them into Pereskia bulbs, which, of course, Pereskia bulbs can be used to feed you. They uh, can be cooked in a, a furnace or whatnot, used in different recipes, but cooked and given to you as a roasted Pereskia, which is also a really good food source. There's tons of good food sources in this mod. Now, beyond that, because the Pereskias are also an ingredient, by the way, if in most cases at least, not to say that they are in every case, but they are used for casting different spells and whatnot, specifically the one that's, some of the ones that I was just casting. But uh, if we move on to the next stuff, we've got runic shears, which in a fey crafting altar, you will then need to have some of those Pereskias, regular shears, regular runestone, and you get these. What do they give you? They give you a lot of stuff, actually. Uh, if you look here, they can 
harvest wheat into wild wheat or will do heat i don't know what you really want to call it but let me grab my uh runic shears here which i have unbreaking on them just because I, I want them to last longer but you can use them on regular wheat to get yourself wild wheat or or will do heat or will do wheat whatever, whatever you want to call it but still you get some of this and then you can use that to make wild wheat bread which is very nutritious or you can turn it into seeds and replant it which therefore once you've done that once you can replant it and you can always propagate it from there now otherwise what can this be used for it can be used to make it get moss off of moss stone <laughs> just like a regular knife would be let's actually run over here click on here Ta -da! so it has multiple functions for that but it, it that's not everything it can also turn beetroots into spirit herbs which then can be used to replant and you can continue on from there it also can be used to turn carrots into aubergines but that's not really too specific most importantly though it can be used to gain yourself this fey leather fey leather is something that can be gained from animals now let's see here i've got a cow i don't think that i've used it on this cow but let's try it I right click Oh, the phase equivalent has nothing to gift you at this time. I have already received the uh, gift from that cow, so let me spawn in a new one. So if I spawn a regular cow here, and I right-click with these special shears, ta-da, I can get some of this fey leather, which allows you to gain some stuff from the animals. Now, yes, there are ways of gaining all the animal drops in this mod without having to ever kill one, so keep that in mind. But fey leather can be used as a crafting ingredient in the future, as well as, uh, well, it's just really good for making some really cool armor. Uh, now, moving on from that, though, there's going to be one last thing I'm going to show you, and that is the wild wood growth. That is how you can get into a very large portion of this mod by making wild wood. And that's pretty much these trees here. I added the runes myself. But as you can see, it's, it's a really nice texture. They've got a very good presence about them. They're just a really pretty tree but you will need this ri this ritual on the pyre now i have one set up over here all i need to do is pretty much just click on it uh, but let me move some of this stuff off my inventory but you can see we've got the wildwood wildwood we've got the uh the spirit herbs a couple of uh oak bark and a, one of the dark wood bark uh there and then you just burn it with my flint and steel that i had in my pouch you light that up and if you have some wild root that is fully grown nearby, it should, in time, convert that into, poof, <laughs> a wildwood tree. Which is unique in the fact that if you end up cutting it down, which I will here, I have uh, Ore Excavate installed in this uh, small pack that I made for this uh, bit by bit. So if I harvest this tree down, instead of dropping saplings, it will drop these wild wood or wild roots so you will have to actually regrow and reperform that entire ceremony again uh, once again so that's just something to keep in mind now if you have wild wood logs and you wanted to get decorative for some reason you can therefore let me grab this and this i have a knife i have it can be any knife it doesn't have to be a silver one and you need to have moon glow leaves which by the way those are made with glass quartz leaves and birch bark times two over on a pyre will get you a few of those which of course you can then plant them regularly uh you just have to have one in your offhand and a knife and then you can make the runes in the uh, wild woods if uh logs if you so desire otherwise you can use these to pretty much make oh wait that's something else completely you can use them to make all sorts of uh different you can of course get wildwood bark and whatnot you can use them for crafting a lot of different armors and tools and weapons and all sorts of cool stuff that this mod has to offer so before i get too much more carried away with this mod basics i hope to see you guys again in the next bit by bit where i cover a whole bunch more things about this wonderful update to roots if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, be sure to spread the mischief to others. And feel free to visit us on Twitch most nights around 10 p.m. See you next time.